Hey folks, it's Fridgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Boulder Canyon. The tractor is herring up across the field getting this corn planted. However, we've only got 120 litres of corn left in the tank. So what I'm thinking is we ought to go and top that one up a minute. Then we don't need to worry about it just for a little while. We'll probably end up having to top it up again, but I don't think even if we let this one run out, I don't think there's going to be enough to be able to complete the field. So if I stop right there and I run it back over to our seed tank and we go and top it up, then we can bring it back. We can set him going again and forget about him for most of the rest of the episode while we go and do a few other bits and pieces. We've just got that baler to clean off and tidy up, and then we can go and get going with a few more of the trees. We want to get those trees out of the way, which uh, at the moment, while we're doing the planting, that's the perfect opportunity to do it. Let's back up a bit more. Back up a bit more. Okay. Really doesn't like filling up the seed drill, does it? Like you, uh, well, I suppose it's not really it's not, it doesn't like it, it's that the trigger for that particular tank is really, really close to the actual tank, which is slightly inconvenient, it must be said. Now, we'll bring you in around over here like this, and I think that is probably close enough like that. So then I can press H, and you're away and doing a fan dabby doozer job so we're going to let you carry on doing that and then i'm going to skip back over here to this one we're going to hose it down so that we've got a nice clean baler and then we can go and put the baler away in the shed and not have to worry about it anymore that i think is everything tidied away in the yard we've serviced all we haven't serviced the combine we didn't service the combine or the header uh, we will do that before we start the next harvest and then we can unhitch because we've got to move the header out of the way anyway so that we can get the corn header on so we can do all of the servicing and everything then and hopefully that will work out just fine. Now I'm wondering about the wisdom of leaving the rake outside while we've got the cultivator in undercover. I do think maybe we ought to consider changing those round and have the cultivator outside up against the barn and put the rake under cover. However, the cultivator does fit in there quite nicely. It tucks in the back there out of the way and we don't have to worry about it, whereas the rake takes up the entire space. So, yeah, all right, we'll, we'll leave it like it is. So it's, it, it is at least under, underneath the tarpaulin, so it's, it's not, like, all bad bring you in there a little bit turn you a bit and there we have a baler all put away so that is everything put away in there the only thing that we've got left to do is to get the herbicide sprayed on the field that is the only thing that we've now got left the animals are tidy we don't have very much wool over there that we need to sell at the moment so that we don't have to worry about uh what have we got one two Two pallets worth, essentially. Got two pallets worth in there. And then the chickens over here, we've got that one pallet there that is not quite full. The rest are full, and we're now working on these. Got 9,000 in that one. Um, 5,000 in that one. 9,000 in that one. 5,000 in that one there. And... 2,000 in that one there. It's going to be interesting seeing those fill up, I think. And I've got the animal trailer over there. I could get rid of that. We Technically, we don't need that one anymore. Not because I... The, re, the reason that I originally kept it was because I was considering getting another sheep pen and having more sheep beside, you know, on top of what we've already got. I don't think I'm going to do that, though. I think we're just going to stick with the one sheep pen... I think we've got enough money coming in now that um, an extra sheep pen is not actually going to be needed in order to achieve all of our targets. So today is going to be mostly a tree felling day. Though we have got the, um, the planting is underway that we've also got to deal with as well. So let's uh, just bring you in over here. 
Okay, now, uh, that's probably not the best way to do this. Let's you it. There we go. That's looking a little bit better, isn't it? So, we can grab you over there and swing you out over that way. Slice you up, and then I'll get the next one. And we are properly away with the tree felling job. So, we've got the trees that are up against that big stone right there. I don't think we need to move them. They're not going to be in the way of anything that we're potentially going to want to... Uh, build anything like that if we build any tracks they'll be slightly more down this way than they will over towards that big stone so those trees there that are around that stone they can stay there just for appearances and then you know it, it just sort of makes the place look a little bit nicer if we've got at least a few trees still standing right in the middle I was considering getting rid of that huge, great, big, tall one over there, but the more I think about it, the more I think that we shouldn't. Um, yes, it would be a small cash injection, but it would be relatively minor compared to all of the stuff that we're getting at the moment. Uh, we, we have got a huge quantity of money coming in. And yes, it has been pointed out a few times now that the eggs... Just leaving them right until the end of the series. Definitely not a realism thing. Uh, those eggs would be manky and stinking and nasty. And just, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't be pleasant for anybody, right? There, there would be no pleasantness involved whatsoever. And it, it's not something that you'd want to experience having the eggs left for that long. However, I still want to do it because I want to see just how many we're going to get before all of this finishes. And we've got so much other money coming in, I'm reasonably confident that we can actually do it. We can not sell any eggs whatsoever until the end of the series, and we'll still be able to do it really successfully. We've got a pen full of chickens. We don't need to worry about the chickens at all. So all we've got to do is just have those animals... Um, I want to lift that one up. Push you out over there. Um, all we've got to do is just have the, the chickens there and the full pen and, and that's it. We, we've achieved a target with the chickens. And also, I, I kind of figured it would be nice not to make a load of money out of chickens considering that the end of the Ravenport series was pretty much entirely focused on doing um, chickens. Like the... All, we, all of our income was coming from chickens, and we were making a fortune out of them. So I kind of figured it would be nice. I mean, I know that the two series are completely unrelated, um, but I still figure it would be nice to not get the money coming in from the chickens just to kind of see what it's like. Um, it could be argued that by using the pallets that we're using, we are in fact sort of putting in a bit of a cheat. And that we should be picking up the eggs, the, the, the small cases of eggs. However, my counter-argument to that is that I don't believe the game should have had the eggs being done like that in the first place. Because how many professional outfits do you know that don't have some kind of automation for gathering and loading eggs? Uh... All of the professional outfits that I've ever seen, ever heard of, that do um, eggs on a large scale, have one thing in common. It's automated, right? There's automation all the way through, gathering up those eggs and doing it like that. So having the eggs on the farm being done the way they are, and having to go and pick them up uh, just a few at a time, Whereas everything else we've got is done with machinery and it's done with automation and things like that. It just seems a weird choice. It, it seems a very strange choice, especially considering the potential income that you get from eggs. If you were to, in real life, expand your egg income, expand your egg empire out beyond a handful of chickens where you're gathering them up by hand you would be doing something to automate the whole process. You wouldn't be just having a few little eggs on a, a thing like that and spending half a day picking them up. And that's what you end up having to do. Like, if you've if you just got the, the little boxes there, you have to gather them up, but then you've got to hand stack them onto a load of some kind. 
in order to be able to move them, and none of that feels particularly simulator-ish to me. That that does that that doesn't sit well with me. That particular bit for the chickens, um, which is why I like the pallets. Now the sheep, that's a little bit different. They already do come in pallets, and we've already got um, machines that we can use for shifting those pallets should we wish to. Um, so. All I'm doing is just, like, compressing the pallets down a little bit, reducing the amount of times that I've got to go in there. Um, yes, that could be argued that it's slightly less than realistic by doing it the way that I'm doing it. Uh, probably, yes, I agree with you on that one. However, I don't care because it's reducing the amount of load of work that I've got to do. And as far as I'm concerned, reducing load of work is always a good thing. I don't like to do excessive amounts of loader work, as many of you already know. Uh, I'll do some, but I don't like to overdo it when it comes to loader work. I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of doing lots of loader work. So some is acceptable, but I do prefer to find alternative methods. And I will continue to attempt to find alternative methods for loader work for just about all loader work that I do in the game, regardless of what series I'm playing. Uh, simply because, yeah, um, you know, the, the aforementioned wanting to avoid the load of work, it, it's, it's quite important to me. It, it, it is quite an important thing to me. Now, we've got a few more trees in here that I want to take out. There's several over that way that we also want to get rid of. Um, well, I say several. There's a few kicking out that way that we want to get rid of. But mostly from here, I've got there's a, like a line of them along the bottom of the hill that we're looking at over in that direction that we're going to want to get rid of. So let me just chop that one off there like that. And then if we go into here a second and we go back to that. Now, hopefully this time I won't accidentally buy a sandcastle like I did over there and didn't even realize I'd done it. So we've got the road comes out over here and these trees come up over here. I was considering getting rid of a few of these trees along the bottom of the hill along here. I thought we we're in the way a little bit. Um, I actually want to get those two trees right there. Just the fact that they exist so close to each other bugs me. So maybe we'll take out just this little section of trees right here. And then a few sort of along there. And then we've got this cluster right in front of me. Probably leave those two trees. These three I think we might get rid of. And then it's those trees right there. So yeah, we haven't got all that many. You've stopped already. Really? I was stood right next to you. Helper A is blocked by an object. What is help? No, you're not. You're just being difficult. You're not blocked by anything at all. You are just trying to be difficult. You're going out of your way to try and be difficult right there. There is no other explanation for that other than the fact that you don't want a job any longer. I'm, I'm quite happy to get rid of you. There's plenty of other people who have been, been sent up the road lately. I, I seem to be run on to, like, I, I seem to have had a bad run of workers. So just, just people that don't want to work. And quite frankly, I'm not interested in people that don't want to work. I want people here who do want to work. Right? If, if you want to work, that's fine. Excellent. Fantastic. I've got work for you. If you don't want to work, if you can't be bothered, uh, you, you on your bike, son. I, I've, I've got no place for you here. On your bike, sunshine. I have got no place for you here. And I am not interested in keeping you. Now, I'm going to just pull that back over that way a little bit. And... Bring you in. That's about right. Yep, ideal. I was wondering whether that was actually going to grab that tree, but it did. It did so without any problems whatsoever. It was cooperative, that tree, despite the fact that I was chopping it off at the base. Unlike the workers. You know, I'm trying to help them out. I'm trying to give them jobs. I'm trying to give them money so that they can pay their bills. Um, yes, admittedly, a lot of their bills are from me, you know. We can't expect them to live in those houses that we provide for free. It does cost them money. I mean, I, I, I'm not excessive with the money. I only garnish 75% of their pay for their living accommodation and other expenses. And I feel that is quite reasonable. 
I feel that is quite reasonable. You know, they are getting somewhere to live. They are free, if they want to, to hire a piece of land from me and put a tent on it. I've got absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. They are more than welcome to do that. I'm, I'm quite happy for them to hire a piece of land from me and put a tent up on it. Um, I do require that all of my workers live on the farm. So, um, yeah, the, the, like somebody had, had the audacity to suggest that, well, they would just pitch their tent somewhere on land that wasn't owned by me. And that's fine. You, you go right ahead and do that. Unfortunately, I can't keep you on payroll if you're going to do that because I need you on farm so that you're on call. You know, if the animals get out in the middle of the night and you're... Um, off in the middle of nowhere and I can't get hold of you, what are we going to do? As I'd, I'd have to get out of my own bed and go and deal with my own animals all because you want to live somewhere other than on the farm. And that is completely unacceptable. I will not stand for such nonsense. So yes, by all means, go and pitch your tent somewhere else. Uh, just don't bother turning up for work in the morning because um, someone else will have already filled the position. And I... You know, the people look at me and they, they tell me that I'm being unreasonable with these different things. I, how is that being unreasonable? I'm not being unreasonable. I'm, I'm being very reasonable. Providing shelter. I'm providing gainful employment. Um, they, to be honest, I think people are just, they're just too picky these days. They're just too picky. Um, you know, what, what, whatever happened to just being grateful that you've got a job, eh? Well, whatever happened to just being great? I tell you what, I'm, I might joke about this. Um, there are actually people like that in the world, and it genuinely does sicken me that there are people who... And not only that, is that the some people who are like that genuinely believe they are doing you a favour by taking 75% of your pay for the grotty, run-down caravan they're forcing you to live in, and they think you should be grateful for it. It's, it beggars belief, it really does. So I, I don't, I, I will just state that I don't actually think along those lines, okay? It is, it is in jest. Um, some comments I've had at times suggest that maybe people think that I'm not, um, that I, I'm being a little bit more serious than I am. I'm really not. <laughs> I'm really not. Um... I would be the last person to uh, be that kind of employer. I despise that kind of employer, and I've had employers close to that, and I take great delight in making their life miserable. All right, I probably don't last very long in said jobs, but it's worth it. I, I'm not going to stay working for someone like that, um, and neither should you if you've got any choice whatsoever in the matter. Unfortunately, though... Uh, some people are stuck in jobs like that, and the employers know it, which is why they're like they are. Uh, because some people have got no option, some people have got no choice, and that is the bit that makes it even worse. Alright, that is absolute exploitation, and I despise that. I absolutely despise that, I really do. So I, I, I just want to set the matter straight, that when I am saying these things, I'm actually not meaning it um just because of some of the uh, responses i've had that appear to be maybe taking it slightly more seriously than is intended so just just for the record no i don't believe that it would be a good thing no i do not believe that workers should be treated like that and no i definitely don't believe that anybody should be grateful for the opportunity to be treated like that I think that would be an absolute travesty, and it is repulsive in the extreme. Uh, so, there, yeah, I've, I've set the record straight now. Um, we'll go and check on that corn in a minute. Actually, we'll go and do that right now, because I can jump out of here, and I can chop that one up there. We've got 4% left in our machine over here. He's not going to be able to do that with 21 litres of corn. So we will whiz back up here and we may as well top the thing right back up again because we will be using it again. We're going to need to do a different crop in between this one. And then we're going to want to do another round of corn straight after, which means that we are going to end up doing a lot of... Oops. Okay. I actually need to do that. Uh, we are going to end up doing 
quite a bit of uh, corn planting and harvesting. And so we're, we'll be using this one again fairly soon. Might not be immediately because we do have to do another crop. And we did state that we can't do two crops in succession. We did do barley right at the beginning because we were running some quantity tests and um, yield tests. But that was purely because we were doing some test work. So if we're doing corn this time, how are we doing on here? That is 917. So like I said, I'm not sure if it did actually get above 1,000. I think it did, but I'm not 100% sure. We've got plenty of wheat and barley, which will keep us going. We don't have all that much in a way of beans, especially for when we start to really increase the amount of pigs that we've got. We will either be doing canola or more beans because we're going to need a protein feed. I'm not sure which one yields the highest. I think these three actually yield about the same. For sheer value... I don't think it really matters which one. Uh, well, actually, sheer value, I think beans... Uh, out of these three, I think beans give you the most value. Um, but I think yields... Like, you do slightly get an increased yield. Not enough increased yield to offset the value that you get from the beans. However, with canola, the increased yield is... if Because we want it just for pigs, then that would be a beneficial thing. So I think we might do canola next, after we've done corn. And then we will do another crop of corn, so that we've got a bit more maize in storage ready for our... Um, Pigs. No, they're going to need a reasonable amount of food in there. Right, back on to the tree harvester, and we will chop down a few more trees. I reckon one more day of timber chopping. I don't want to do it all in one go, but we are going to kind of want to hurry the tree bit along now, aren't we? We've got a few out along this side, and then there's a few up over to the other end. That is not that many to do here. So I reckon that it would be less than an episode and we'll get all of these done. But we, we've got other timber that we need to go and chop down. No, not chop down. We, we've got other bits of this to do. We, we've got the stumps to grind out. And then we've got the, tri the logs to pick up and take the sawmill and sell. That's another thing that we've got to do. We've also got the herbicide still to spray. That's another thing on the old to-do list. Right, there is two trees right here. I'm going to move back round over this way so that I can get these two trees. These two here are the ones I'm wondering if we've got a dodgy one in here. Although I don't think we have. I don't think we... We, we don't seem to have found any dodgy ones since we started using this one. And I'm wondering if maybe the dodgy ones only activate, only sort of show up with the chainsaw cutting them down. Because when we were using the chainsaw, the dodgy ones were showing up. And I, this, this is my theory, is that dodgy ones won't show up with the tree harvester. For some reason, it was only the chainsaw that was trigger, triggering them to do that weird thing, you know, where you got only half the tree there. That's, that's my theory on this particular one. I mean, it might not be the case. Helper J has completed their task. We're going to have to skip over to him in a second then, because that means that we have to turn the time scale back up again. So it was just this tree here. I get that one, and then we've got the little tip that we want to get rid of. Uh, that tree over there, we're going to leave. That one I'm not going to chop up. Bring that in there. Right, let's have a look over here. So that one... Okay, I actually do want to remove that one, I think. And then we've got a little bit of a line of trees along here. There's... There's a bit of a clump of trees in here that we want to take out. And then there was a few over there. Just to make sure that we've got sufficient space. And then we want to remove these back here. I'm actually thinking that we don't need to remove that lot of trees over there. Just a few of these. One, two, three, four maybe. And those. And that would be about it. I don't think there'd be anything else needed. So I just want to go to this one over here and make sure he has actually fished. Yes, he has. That is properly finished. We will check on here. There's a couple of little tiny spots over there, but then that's from the cultivating anyway, so that's, that's not going to do anything different. We can't really change that. Okay, that is done, which means that we're back on five times speed. It's got to stay on there now. Right, we'll run this one back to the yard. 
and we will it's got to be folded up we will wash this one off we will I was going to say we service it but I don't think that it's really going to need any servicing not after just that little bit I don't think it's going to make any difference to it whatsoever we can clean the thing off it's not going to hurt to have it cleaned off bring that one in here I could do sunflowers next however I'm not going to one because I don't think the region we're in in a mountainous area would be suitable for sunflowers and also because the only way that we're going to be able to harvest them is with the maize header and therefore it is going to be slower because that one is narrower than our standard um, reel cutter and I would prefer not to have harvests that take too long to chop through so we, w we won't do that at the moment we will leave it as it is now the twin wheels We'll end up getting rid of those very soon. It does depend on the spray situation. If we get weeds come through before we get to the second stage of growth over there, then we will leave the twins on and we will do the spraying with the twin wheels. And because it's spreading the weight of the crop out a lot more, it's not going to... In theory, it shouldn't actually damage very much at all of the... Um, of, of the crop in there. So yeah, look, right there in front of us, the trees. It's just like a clump of trees there in front of us. And go back into here again. Yeah, so we've we got a few trees there. There's that one right there beside the harvester. And then I was thinking just a few trees here. I, I don't want to, let's, let's not get carried away on this, shall we? We'll do four trees there. And then I was originally thinking this kind of double line of trees right here. There's not actually that many there, is it? We could probably get through those pretty quickly. And that bigger section in the back, I won't take those out. I will leave them where they are. And then we've got just a few left over here that we want to take out. Should be that one, that one, those over there, and then these three at the front. And then the rest of these would be left. I think we can do that. I think we can do that. I think we got time to do that. We should be able to get that done in an episode without too much problem. Um, although, what we will do next is we need to keep an eye out for the weeds growing through. We're hoping that those weeds will grow through fairly soon. Now, my big problem in here is actually getting this stuff put away while I'm wearing twins. Wearing the twin wheels and trying to get this lot put in the shed is definitely not going to be the easiest thing I've ever done. I'm not sure I can even fit in. I ca yes, I can. I can. I can fit in with. Oh, 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 oh! I'm. I'm going to scrape. I'm going to scrape tires. I'm going to scrape the tires. Okay, we, we we can just manage to squeeze in through there like that so we've got the front one in there let's just swap over lower you down and unhitch you right there now i need to come back out of here like that you've got to take into account the way that the tire sort of squeezes out a little bit at the bottom because if you don't the bottom of the tire can hit the metal upright on the barn there and that will utterly destroy the tire Right, your, your, your tyre has had it then after that. And you really, really don't want that to happen. So we can back in here. This is where you would actually have somebody spotting for you. Right, I've done that before. I've, uh, you know, when you've, you've put into a really, really tight space, you have someone spot for you. We drop that one down right there like that. And then out we go. Okay, we managed to fit that one in there. We've got enough room that we could put another machine in front if we wanted to. Uh, to get that sprayer out, I'm going to need the other tractor to actually get it out of the shed for us. Because this one is in no fit condition to be driving in there to get that one out. We've got that dolly right there. That one's going to have to go back to the dealership at some point fairly soon. But it's not going to go back right now. We've got just enough time, I think, to grab another couple of trees over here. And, well, certainly that one tree over there. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these four that I was lining up over here. Five it is, actually. There's five trees here. And we'll take those out. There's that one right there. So we'll start removing a couple of these. We'll start you up and get that one on there like that. And then 
bring you back out round over to here. And it's that one there. I'm not going to take any more. It's so easy just to, like, keep going back. Like, you take one tree out and then you look at it. You think, oh, no, we take another little bit off over there just to, to bring that bit. It's like turning wood. If you're trying to make a sphere or an egg shape when you're using a lathe, a, a wood lathe, um, you start off by making your egg shape. And you, you have all the right curves on it, and it looks really good. It looks fantastic. And no, I don't want those trees there. It's these four in a line. Let's, let's try and be a little bit vigilant about this. Um, these five, rather. Uh, you start off by having your block of wood, and you start sort of carving it down into an egg shape. And you think, yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, Maybe I could just take a little bit more off over that side. And so you take a little bit more off there. And then you look at it again. You think, well, it doesn't quite look egg-shaped now. It, it looks a little bit out. I'll take a little bit more off of this side. And, and so you keep going. You start off with a piece of wood that's six inches in diameter. So you've got a decent-sized egg from one end to the other. And you just keep going, trying to just get it just right. And you end up with an egg that's three inches across. It's absolutely... It's so easy to do that. It's even more likely to happen if you're trying to turn a sphere because a sphere has to be even, like even more so than an egg. And I've done it, like it's bad enough trying to get an egg, just to get the dimensions just right on an egg. Um, but you're trying to turn a wooden sphere and do it by eye. That is pretty much impossible. It's not going to happen. You've got... Um, uh, there's a whole load of like little details that you, you're looking at on it and then you turn the thing round to try and get the best possible feel of it as well and it it just doesn't come out right. It just it just ends up all being wrong. Okay, I want to get that one right in there like that. And there we go. Okay, I won't do any more. That is all we got time for. So in our next episode, we will chop down the rest of these trees, I'm hoping. And we will also sell a whole lot of logs. And then that means that we can finally go and sell that bad boy by cows and pigs, or at least by the pens. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, then please hit down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.